Japan's dream of quick victory in China went for naught. The Chinese could take it and give it. U.S. rights in the Orient meant nothing to the Japs. Bombs fell on our hospitals, although these institutions were plainly marked. Drunk with the lust for power and aggression, their eyes were blinded to all signs of humanity. The killers found willing pawns behind whom to cloak their infamous ravaging of China. In Nanking, they set up another puppet government to do their will, headed by a former premier of China, Wang Ching Wai. Remember the Panay? Under the command of Captain Hughes, the American gunboat was on a mission of mercy rescuing American newspaper men, newsreel men, and others from a besieged city. The gunboat had cruised the Yangtze River for years. Every Jap flyer knew its familiar outlines. Without warning came the Jap dive bombers. Cowardly attack, but the Japs insisted it was a case of mistaken identity. Excuse, please. Actually, it was just another incident in Japan's treacherous course of aggression against the white man in Asia. Men killed, women abused, commerce obstructed, a malicious flouting of the principles of peace and goodwill. The sinking of the Panay was a milestone in Japan's infamous march of terror. The Burma Road, long the only lifeline of supplies for China's gallant army, has been bombed time and time again by the Japs. Not all of her planes are good, but she has plenty of them. With her great air superiority, Japan literally blasted city after city especially China's upriver capital, Chongqing. And this is the way the Japanese later bombed their way to victory in Malaya, Singapore, and the Dutch East Indies. Air superiority, the answer to Japan's surprising successes. Only a greater air force can smack her down. Chongqing bombed day after day, more than a hundred times in all. And time after time, its brave people flee to the hills, determined to hang on. the fate of city after city in the Orient, and even at the gates of Australia. What next? Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles? Perhaps, so the Japs think, but a great America is now aroused. Under bomb and air blitz, China's angel of mercy carries on. In Berlin, Hitler welcomed Japan to his gang. The three power treaty, Germany, Italy, Japan. Dictator nations falling in step for world domination. And for Japan, the man who signed is the one who later talked peace in Washington as Pearl Harbor was bombed, Kurosu. Later in Moscow, the wily Jap Matsuoko signed a non-aggression pact to keep Russia off Japan's back. They well knew the short bombing range from Vladivostok to Tokyo. 
Japan thus got a free hand in the Orient. Or did she? We shall see. In Tokyo, Japanese naval leader is plotting to spread the bloody rays of the rising sun throughout the Far East and to the Americas. At the very same time that Kurisu and Nomura, unctuous and unscrupulous, talked peace in Washington, stalling for time, Japanese planes were warming up for the most daring, dastardly attack in all history. Unheralded, undeclared, the villainous followers of the barbaric Hideyoshi launched their treacherous and surprising attack on Honolulu and Pearl Harbor. Undeclared war on the United States, the crime of the centuries, death and destruction as gratitude for years of peace and helpful friendship, murder of the innocents here and in the Philippines, an attack that aroused all American nations to the menace of Axis world domination. Proof of Japan's years of perfidy. New weapons, two-man submarines, especially built for this sneak attack. The Japs gained an initial advantage by their surprise assault, but they'll pay and pay, like this one for their treacherous deeds. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. The die is cast. America is at war. Our enemies, Japan, Germany, and Italy, are out in the open. The nation prepares to protect its traditions and its way of life, to guarantee that its children shall not become chattels of an inglorious German-Japanese state. Those who gave their lives that fateful Sunday morning at Pearl Harbor will never be forgotten. Their sacrifice has brought a new unity to us. The crucible of war has brought new heroes to the fore. Young men whose bravery and daring rises above and beyond the line of duty. New names for the nation's hall of fame. A growing chronicle of valorous deeds that proves the red blood of courage still runs strong in American youth. With men such as these to fight her battle against despotism, America can't lose. No nation ever had a tougher problem of supply for its forces and its allies. Thousands of ocean miles, countless days, to get planes and guns and men to the Far East war zone. Southward through the Indies, the Japs' tide spread. With only General MacArthur and his heroic troops, American and Philippine holding on to Bataan, to the everlasting glory of American arms. A two-fisted American general whose brilliant leadership against overwhelming odds stopped the Japanese juggernaut in its tracks. His amazing troops astounded the world by their determined resistance. His well-trained Filipino forces have won for themselves the plaudits of the Allied world. MacArthur's men. MacArthur, the man of destiny. The mighty guns of Corregidor Speak the only language Nippon's power-seeking fanatics understand. This is our answer to the fiends of Nippon. Guns and more guns to blast them from the earth. Tanks and more tanks to crush their ungodly lust for domination over the decent nations of the earth. The cost will be high for ships and planes and all that goes to make victory possible. The toll will be high in lives as well. But no matter what the price, no matter what the sacrifice, for every one of us, 
the menace of the rising sun and of the Nazi monster must be ended for all time. In this critical hour of our nation's destiny, the spirit of Washington bids us pray and work and fight for freedom. With General MacArthur in command, leading the combined forces of freedom, our victory drive in the South Pacific must not stop until Japan itself is overrun and conquered. The way to victory is plain. So wake up, America. We must win or die.